Rail transport is an important mode of transport in India. All main line rail operations in India are handled by Indian Railways IR, a state-owned organisation of the Ministry of Railways. As of March 2017, the rail network comprises 121,407 kilometers, 75,439 miles of track over a route of 67,368 kilometers, 41,861 miles and 7,349 stations. It is the fourth largest railway network in the world after those of the United States, Russia and China. 38% of the routes are electrified with 25 kV AC electric traction while 33% of them are double or multi-tracked. It is one of the busiest networks in the world, transporting 8.107 billion passengers and over 1.108 billion tons of freight annually, as of 2016. Indian Railways is the world's eighth largest employer, with more than 1.308 million employees as of March 2017. As of March 2017, IR's rolling stock consisted of 277,987 freight wagons, 70,937 passenger coaches and 11,452 locomotives. IR owns locomotive and coach production facilities at several locations in India. The urban rail transit systems across the country are operated independently of Indian railways. There are currently 11 operational rapid transit also called metro systems in 10 cities in India. As of November 2017, India has 425 kilometers 264 miles of operational metro lines and 347 stations. A further 500 plus km of lines are under construction. Topic: History Topic. Rail transport in India began in the early 19th century. 1832–1852, Industrial Railways Topic. The first proposals for railways in India were made in Madras in 1832. The first train in India ran from Red Hills to Chintadrapit Bridge in 1837. It was called Red Hill Railway and used a rotary steam locomotive manufactured by William Avery. The railway was built by Sir Arthur Cotton and was mainly used for transporting granite stones for road building work in Madras. In 1845 Cotton built the Godavari Dam Construction Railway at Dalswaram in Rajamundri, used to supply stones for construction of a dam over Godavari. On 8 May 1845, Madras Railway was incorporated, and East India Railway was incorporated the same year. On 1 August 1849 Great Indian Peninsular Railway was incorporated by an Act of Parliament. A guarantee system, providing free land and guaranteeing rates of return 5%, to private English companies building railways was finalised on 17 August 1849. In 1851 the Solana Aqueduct Railway was built in Roorkee, hauled by a steam locomotive called Thomason, named after a British officer. It was used for transporting construction materials for an aqueduct over the Solana River. In 1852 the Madras Guaranteed Railway Company was incorporated. 1853–1924, Passenger Railways and Expansion the first passenger train in India ran between Bombay Bori Bunder and Thane on 16 April 1853. The 14 carriage train was hauled by three steam locomotives, Sahib, Sindh and Sultan. It could carry 400 people and ran on a line of 34 kilometres 21 miles built and operated by GIPR. This line was built in 1,676 mm 5 feet 6 in broad gauge, which became the standard for railways in the country. In eastern India, the first passenger railway train ran from Howrah near Calcutta to Hooghly on the 15th of August 1854. The 39 kilometer 24 miles line was built and operated by Iyer. In May 1854, the Bombay Thane line was extended to Kalyan by building India's first railway bridge, the Dapori Viaduct over Ulhas River. The line was extended to Kapoli in 1855. In August 1855, Iyer Express and Ferry Queen steam locomotives started hauling trains. 
The first passenger train in South India ran from Royapuram and Vayasarapati Madras to Walaja Road on 1 July 1856 on a 97-kilometre line built and operated by Madras Railway. On 24 February 1873 the first tramway, a 3.8 kilometres horse-drawn tramway, opened in Calcutta between Silda and Armenian Ghat Street. On 9 May 1874 a horse-drawn tramway began operation in Bombay between Calaba and Peril. In 1880 Calcutta Tramways Company was incorporated, GIPR started its first workshops in Baikala in 1854 and Madras Railway set up their first workshop at Parambur in 1856. The railway boom continued with the incorporation of Bombay, Baroda, and Central India Railway BB and CI in 1855, Eastern Bengal Railway in 1858, and East Coast State Railway in 1890. Great South Indian Railway GSIR and Carnatic Railway merged in 1874 to form the South Indian Railway. In 1897 lighting in passenger coaches was introduced by many railway companies. In 1902 the Jodhpur Railway became the first to introduce electric lights as standard fixtures. In 1920 electric lighting of signals was introduced between Dadar and Curry Road in Bombay. 1925–1950, electrification and further expansion Topic The first railway budget was presented in 1925. The OUDH and Rohilkhand Railway was merged with IR in the same year. In 1930, Hyderabad Godavari Valley Railway was merged with Nizam State Railway. On 3 February 1925, India's first electric passenger train ran between Victoria Terminus and Kurla, on 1,500 volts DC overhead traction with locomotives provided by Camel Laird and Yerdinganwagen Fabric Companies. Later that year, the VT Bandra section was electrified with an elevated platform at Sandhurst Road. Kurla Kalyan and lines to Pune and Igapuri were electrified in 1926 and the Bandra Veera section was electrified by January 1928. On 1 June 1930 the Deccan Queen began running, hauled by a WCP-1 number 20,024, Old No EA, 1-4006 with seven coaches, on the GIPR's electrified route from Bombay VT to Pune, Pune the Frontier Mail made its inaugural run in 1928 between Bombay VT and Peshawar. In 1929 the Grand Trunk Express began running between Peshawar and Mangalore and Punjab Limited Express began running between Mumbai and Lahore. Technical advancements saw automatic color light signals first become operational on GIPR's lines between Bombay VT and Baikala in 1928 and were extended to the Baikala Kurla section the following year. 1951–1983, Zonal Reorganization and Further Developments Topic India's railways were reorganized into regional zones beginning in 1951 with the creation of Southern Railway on 14 April and Central Railway and Western Railway on 5 November. The post of Chief Commissioner of Railways was abolished and the Railway Board adopted the practice of making its senior most member chairman. Also in 1951, the government of West Bengal entered into an agreement with the Calcutta Tramways Co. to take over its administrative functions. On 14 April 1952 Northern Railway, Eastern Railway and Northeastern Railway were created. On 1 August 1955 Southeastern Railway was split from Eastern Railway, and the following year divisional systems of administration were set up for the various regional zones. In 1958 the Northeastern Railway split to form a new Northeast Frontier Railway, in 1952 fans and lights were mandated for all compartments in all classes of passenger accommodation and sleeping accommodation was introduced in coaches. In 1956 the first fully air-conditioned train was introduced between Howrah and Delhi. In 1966 the first containerized freight services began, between Bombay and Ahmedabad. In 1957 India Railways took a decision to adopt 25 kV AC electrification and chose SNCF French National Railway as technical consultant. The main line electrification project was established in the same year. Raj Karswan Dongoposi became the first section to be electrified with 25 kV AC traction with the first train running on of August 1960. In 1966 electrification of several suburban tracks around Delhi, Madras and Calcutta was completed with the 25 kV AC system. 
In 1979 the main line electrification project was reconstituted into Central Organization for Railway Electrification 1984–1990 Rapid transit and later developments Calcutta Metro became the first metro in the country with the 24th of October 1984 line between Esplanade and Bhowanipur now the Nataji Bhawan station In 1988 the first Shatabdi Express was introduced between New Delhi and Jhansi later extended to Bhopal and was the fastest train at the time In 1993 air conditioned three tier coaches were introduced as well as a sleeper class separate from second class in 1999 South East Central was constituted. On 6 July 2002 the East Coast, South Western, South East Central, North Central, and West Central zones were created. On 5 April 2016 Gadaman Express, India S fastest train at a maximum speed of 160 km per hour 99 miles per hour, made its first run from Delhi to Agra, India. S first computerized ticketing and reservation was introduced at New Delhi in 1986. In 1990 the first self-printing ticket machine SPTM was introduced. In September 1996 the concert computerized reservation system was fully deployed at New Delhi, Mumbai and Chennai, and was completed nationwide on 18 April 1999. In 1998 coupon validating machines CVMs were introduced at Mumbai CST. Credit cards were accepted for booking tickets and reservations starting in 1999. Indian Railways launched its website in February 2000 and began taking online train reservations and ticketing on 3 August 2002, which was extended to many cities in December. On 26 September 2013 the TACAL system of ticketing extended to ordinary trains. On 16 January 1995 the first regularly scheduled services using the 2 times 25 kV system of traction started on Bina Katni. On 5 February 2012 Western Railway switched completely to 25 kV AC traction, ending its use of 1.5 kV DC traction. On the 11th of April 2016, Central Railway completed switching to 25 kV AC traction, ending the use of DC traction on the country's main line rail network. Indian Railways announced on the 31st of March 2017 that the entire rail network would be electrified by 2022. Topic: <laughs> Rolling stock. Topic: Topic. Locomotives Topic. Locomotives in India largely consist of electric and diesel locomotives. The world's first compressed natural gas CNG locomotives are also being used. Steam locomotives are used only in heritage trains. In India, locomotives are classified according to their gauge, motive power, the work they are suited for and their power or model number. The class name, composed of four or five letters, encodes this information. The first letter denotes the track gauge, the second denotes their motive power, diesel or alternating current electric, the third letter denotes the type of traffic for which they are suited goods, passenger, multi or shunting. The fourth letter used to denote the chronological model number but from 2002 denotes the horsepower range for diesel locomotives. Electric locomotives don't come under this scheme and not all diesels are covered, for these, the fourth letter denotes their chronological model number. A locomotive may have a fifth letter in its class name which denotes a technical variant, subclass or subtype, indicating a variation in the basic model or series, possibly different motors or a different manufacturer. With the new scheme for classifying diesel locomotives as mentioned above, the fifth letter further refines the horsepower indication in 100 horsepower, 75 kilowatts increments. A for 100 horsepower, B for 200 horsepower, C for 300 horsepower, etc. In this scheme, a WDM3A refers to a wide gauge diesel multi-use 3100 horsepower loco, while a WDM3D would be a 3400 horsepower loco and WDM3F would be 3600 horsepower loco. 
Note, this classification system does not apply to heritage steam locomotives which retain their historical class names such as M-Class or WP-Class. Diesel locomotives have been fitted with auxiliary power units which save nearly 88% of fuel while idling. Topic. Goods wagons Topic. The number of goods wagons was 205,596 on 31 March 1951 and peaked at 405,183 on 31 March 1980, after which it declined to 239,321 on 31 March 2012. The number is far less than that required for demand and Indian Railways loses freight traffic to road carriers. The railway carried 93 million tons of goods in 1950-51, increasing to 1,010 million tons in 2012-13, however, its share in goods traffic is much lower than road traffic. In 1951, its share was 65%, and the share of the road was 35%. Now the shares have been reversed, and the proportion of railways has declined to 30% while the share of road has increased to 70%. Since the 1990s, Indian Railways has stopped single wagon consignments and provides only full rake freight trains. Wagon types include BOXN equals BOXNHL, BOXNHS, BOXNHL, BOXNCR, BOXNLW, BOXNL, BOXNL, BOBYN, BCNA, BC. NHL, BTPN, BCACBM, BCCN, BOBRN, BRH, BTPGLN, VVN. Topic: Passenger coaches. Topic: IR has several types of passenger coaches. See section Passenger services below. The coaches used in IR are produced at Integral Coach Factory, Chennai, Rail Coach Factory, Kapurtala and Modern Coach Factory, Raibareli. This includes the new Link Hoffman LHB coaches. Electric multiple unit EMU coaches are used for suburban traffic in large cities, mainly Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, Kolkata, Pune, Hyderabad and Bangalore. These coaches numbered 7,793 on 31 March 2012. They have second class and first class seating accommodation. Passenger coaches numbered 46722 and other coaches, luggage coach, parcel van, guards coach, mail coach, etc. numbered 6560 on the 31st of March 2012. Topic: Manufacturing. Topic: the Chittaranjan Locomotive Works in Chittaranjan makes electric locomotives. The Diesel Locomotive Works in Varanasi makes diesel locomotives. The Integral Coach Factory in Parambur, Chennai makes integral coaches. These have a monocoque construction, and the floor is an integral unit with the undercarriage. The Rail Coach Factory in Kapurtala also makes coaches. The Rail Wheel Factory at Yalahanka, Bangalore and Rail Wheel Plant, Bella, Chopra, Bihar manufacture wheels and axles. Diesel Loco Modernization Works, Patiala upgrades the WDM2 Diesel Loco from 2600 to 3100 horsepower 1900 to 2300 kilowatts. Some electric locomotives have been supplied by BHEL, Jhansi and Palakkad, and locomotive components are manufactured in several other plants around the country. Network. Topic. Topic. Tracks. Topic. As of March 2017, IR network spans 121,407 kilometers (75,439 miles) of track length, while the route length is 67,368 kilometers (41,861 miles). Track sections are rated for speeds ranging from 80 to 200 km per hour 50 to 124 miles per hour, though the maximum speed attained by passenger trains is 180 km per hour 110 miles per hour. 
As of March 2017, most of the broad gauge network is equipped with long welded rails, pre-stressed concrete PSC sleepers and high tensile strength 52 kg, 60 kg 90 UTS rails, 1,676 mm 5 feet 6 in broad gauge, is the predominant gauge used by IR and spans 61,680 km miles of route 92% of total route network. It is the broadest gauge in use across the world for passenger movement. Broad gauge generated 100% of the freight output net ton kilometers and more than 99% of the passenger output passenger kilometers in the fiscal year 2016-17. The 1000 mm 3 feet 3 and 3 in meter gauge tracks, 762 mm 2 feet 6 in and 610 mm 2 feet narrow gauge tracks are present on decreasing number of routes. All of these routes, except the heritage routes, are being converted to broad gauge. The meter gauge tracks were 3,479 kilometers, 2,162 miles, 5% of total route network, and narrow gauges tracks were 2,208 kilometers, 1,372 miles, 3% of total route network. As of the 31st of March 2017, urban rail transit systems in India mostly use standard gauge tracks. These systems are operated by Metro, Tram Rail Corporations which are independent of Indian Railways. Trams in Kolkata, the only remaining tram service in the country uses standard gauge tracks. The Line 1 of Kolkata Metro and Delhi Metro use same broad gauge tracks as main line railways. All other metro lines, constructed, under construction, future, use standard gauge tracks. Metro trains operate in Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Jaipur, Kochi and Lucknow. Gurgaon has a metro system operated by a private organization. Metro tracks are being constructed or planned in all million plus cities in the country. Topic electrification Topic As of 31 March 2018, IR has electrified 49% or 33,057 kilometers 20,541 miles of the route kilometers and 46% or 55,240 kilometers 34,320 miles of the total running track. India uses 25 kV AC traction on all of its electrified tracks. Railway electrification in India began with the first 1,500 volts DC electric train between Bombay Victoria Terminus and Kurla on Harbour Line in 1925. Steep gradients on the Western Ghats necessitated the introduction of electric traction on the Great Indian Peninsula Railway GIPR up to Igapuri on the North East Line and to Pune on the South East Line. 1,500 volts DC traction was introduced on the suburban section of the Bombay, Baroda and Central India Railway BB and CI between Kalaba and Borivili in 1928, and between Madras Beach and Tambaram of the then existing Madras and Southern Maratha Railway in 1931. This was primarily to meet the growing traffic on these metros. The electrification of the Hara Burdwan section of the Eastern Railway was done at 3,000 volts DC and completed in 1958. The 25 kV AC system of traction emerged as an economical modernization resulting from research and trials in Europe, particularly on French Railways SNCF. Indian Railways adopted this standard in 1957, first operational on the Raj Karswan Dongoaposi section on the South Eastern Railway in 1960. The first 25 kV AC electric multiple unit EMU coaches which were for Kolkata suburban services were inaugurated in September 1962. With a view to provide continuity of traction system, the Howrah Burdwan section of the Eastern Railway and Madras Beach Tambaram section of the Southern Railway were converted to the 25 kV AC system by 1968. Considering the limitations in the DC traction system, a decision was made in 1996–97 to convert to 25 kV AC. Conversion from DC traction to AC traction was completed on Western Railway in 2012 and on Central Railway in 2016. Since then, the entire electrified mainline rail network in India uses 25 kV AC, and DC traction is used only for metros and trams. Indian Railways announced on 31 March 2017 that the country's entire rail network would be electrified by 2022. Signalling and telecommunication 
IR uses a range of signaling technologies and methods to manage its train operations based on traffic density and safety requirements. As of March 2017, around 2,850 kilometers (1,770 miles) of the route uses automatic block signaling for train operations, concentrated in high-density routes, large cities, and junctions. Remaining routes are based on absolute block signaling with trains manually controlled by signal men from the signal boxes typically located at stations. Few low-density routes still use manual block signaling methods with communication on track clearance based on physical exchange of tokens. In a few sections, intermediate block signaling is provided to further enhance line capacity with minimal investment. As of March 2017. 501 block sections have intermediate block signals on IR. IR primarily uses colored signal lights, which replaced semaphores and disc-based signaling dependent on position or color. IR uses two aspect, three aspect and four or multiple aspect color signaling across its network. Signals at most stations are interlocked using panel interlocking, route relay interlocking or electronic interlocking methods that eliminate scope for human signaling errors. IR uses track circuiting, and block proving axle counters for train detection. As of March 2017, 5,584 stations across IR about 90% of stations on broad gauge have interlocked stations and multi-aspect signaling. Around 99% of key routes A, B, C and D have track circuitry or block proving axle counters for automated train detection. Also, IR has about 51,000 root kilometers of optical fiber cable OFC network across India, that is used for train control, voice and data communication. Around 2,500 kilometers 1, miles of route is covered by GSMR-based mobile train radio communication. In December 2017, IR announced that it will implement ETCS Level 2 system for signaling and control on key routes with an investment of 12,000 crore rupees $1.7 billion. Currently IR uses centralized traffic control CTC on the busy Ghaziabad Kanpur route and real-time train monitoring systems on Mumbai and Kolkata suburban routes. Topic: <laughs> Links with adjacent countries. Topic: Rail links between India and neighboring countries are not well developed. Two trains operate to Pakistan, the Samjata Express between Delhi and Lahore, and the Thar Express between Jodhpur and Karachi. Bangladesh is connected by the bi-weekly Maitri Express, which runs from Kolkata to Dhaka, and Bundan Express, which began running commercial trips between Kolkata and Kulna in November 2017. Two rail links to Nepal exist, a 59 km passenger service between Jainagar and Bijalpura via Janakpur which is run and operated by Nepal Railways and freight services between Raksal and Burganj. Indian and Bangladeshi governments plan to start work by January 2015 on a new rail link to ease surface transport. India will build a 15 km miles railway linking Tripura's capital Agartala with Bangladesh's southeastern city of Akora, an important railway junction connected to Chittagong port, resource-rich Silhet and Dhaka. An agreement to implement the railway project was signed between India's former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and Bangladesh Premier Sheikh Hasina during her visit to India in January 2010. Total cost of the proposed project is estimated at 252 crore rupees 2.5 billion rupees. The Indian Railway Construction Company IRCON would lay the new railway tracks on both sides of the border. Of the 15 kilometers rail line, 5 kilometers of tracks fall in Indian territory. The Northeast Frontier Railways NFR is laying tracks to connect Tripura's southernmost border town, Sabroom, 135 kilometers (84 miles) south of here. From Sabroom, the Chittagong International Sea Port is 72 kilometers (45 miles). No rail link exists with Myanmar, but a railway line is to be built from Jurabam in Manipur to Tamu through Imphal and Mora. The construction of this missing link, as per the feasibility study conducted by the Ministry of External Affairs through Rights Limited, is estimated to cost 29.41 billion rupees $410 million. An 18-kilometre railway link with Bhutan is being constructed from Hashimara in West Bengal to Torabari in Bhutan. No rail link exists with either China or Sri Lanka. Services. 
Topic. Topic. Passenger service. Topic. Topic. Station categories. Topic. From December 2017, stations are categorized into the non-suburban group NSG1 to NSG6, the suburban group SG1 to SG3, and the halt group HG1 to HG3 based on the earnings, passenger footfall and strategic importance. Before December 2017, stations were classified into A1, A, B, C, D, E and F categories based only on the passenger earnings from the sales of platform tickets, thus limiting the ability of IR to better focus its investments in passenger amenities. Travel classes IR has several classes of travel with or without air conditioning, a train may include just one or several of these. Slow passenger trains have only unreserved seating class whereas Rajdhani, Duranta, Shatabdi, Garab Rath and Yuva trains have only air-conditioned classes. The fares are different for each class with unreserved seating class being the cheapest. The fare of Rajdhani, Duranta and Shatabdi trains includes food served in the train, but for other trains food has to be bought separately. From September 2016, the IR have introduced dynamic fares for all accommodation classes for Rajdhani, Duranta and Shatabdi trains except 1AC and EC classes to shore up revenue. In long distance trains a pantry car is usually included and the food is served at the berth or seat itself. Luxury trains such as Palace on Wheels have separate dining cars but fares are comparable to a five-star hotel. A standard passenger train has four unreserved also called general coaches, two at the front and two at the end, of which one may be exclusively for ladies. The number of other coaches varies according to the demand and route. A luggage coach may be included at the front or back. In some mail trains, a separate mail coach is attached. Lavatories are communal and feature both the Indian style as well as the Western style. The following table lists the classes in operation. A train may not include all of these classes. At the rear of the train is a special compartment known as the guard's cabin. It is fitted with a transceiver and is where the guard usually gives the all-clear signal before the train departs. Topic. Train types Topic. Trains are sorted into categories which dictate the number of stops on a route, their priority on the network and their fare structure. Each express train is identified by a five-digit number, if the first digit is one or two in the train number, they are long-distance express trains. If the first digit is zero, the train is a special train which will operate for a limited period of time with a different fare structure. A first digit of 5 denotes a passenger train. The second digit indicates the zone operating the train. However, for high-speed trains, the second digit is either 0 or 2, the first remains 1 or 2. The third digit denotes the division within the zone which is responsible for maintenance and cleanliness, and the last two digits are the train's serial number. The train numbering system was changed from four digits from December 2010, to accommodate an increasing number of trains. Trains traveling in opposite directions along the same route are usually labeled with consecutive numbers. However, there is considerable variation in train numbers. Some zones, such as Central Railway, have a less systematic method of numbering trains. Trains are classified by average speed. A faster train has fewer stops halts than a slower one, and is usually used for long-distance travel. Most express trains have special names to identify them easily. The names of the trains usually denote the regions they connect, the routes they traverse, a famous person or a tourist spot connected with the train. Tourism The Palace on Wheels is a luxury train service, frequently hauled by a steam locomotive, to promote tourism in Rajasthan. The train has a seven-night, eight-day itinerary on a round trip from New Delhi via Jaipur, Sawai Madhapur and Chittorgarh, Udaipur, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur, Bharatpur and Agra. Royal Rajasthan on Wheels covers a number of tourist destinations in Rajasthan. The seven-day, eight-night tour is a round trip from New Delhi. 
Esif Darjing Station via Jodhpur, Udaipur and Chittorgarh, Ranthambore National Park and Jaipur, Kajuraho, Varanasi and Sarnath, and Agra, Maharajas. Express, a luxury train operated by the Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation IRCTC, runs on five routes to about 12 destinations across northwest and central India centered around Rajasthan from October to April. The Deccan Odyssey covers tourist destinations in Maharashtra and Goa. Its seven-night, eight-day tour begins in Mumbai and stops at Jaigad Fort, Gunapadipule and Ritnagira, Sindhadurg, Tarkarli and Sawantwadi, Goa, Kulapur and Pune day five, Aurangabad and Alora Caves, and Ajanta Caves and Nashik. The Golden Chariot runs on two tours, Pride of the South and Splendor of the South. The Mahapurnirvan Express, an air-conditioned service also known as the Buddhist Circuit Train, is run by the IRCTC for Buddhist pilgrims. Its seven-night, eight-day tour begins in New Delhi and visits Bodh Gaya, Rajgarh and Nalanda, Varanasi and Sarnath, Kushinagar and Lumbini, Sravasti and the Taj Mahal. Ticketing Topic. India has some of the lowest train fares in the world. Basic passenger traffic is heavily subsidized by more expensive higher class fares. Until the late 1980s, Indian Railways ticket reservations were done manually. In 1987 the railways started using a computerized ticketing system. The entire ticketing system went online in 1995 to provide up-to-date information on status and availability. The ticketing network is computerized to a large extent, with the exception of some remote places. Computerized tickets can be booked for any two points in the country, through the internet and via mobile phones, though this method carries an additional surcharge. Discounted tickets are available for senior citizens above 60 years and some other categories of passengers including the disabled, students, athletes, persons affected by serious diseases, or persons appearing for competitive examinations. One compartment of the lowest class of accommodation is reserved for ladies in every passenger carrying train. Some berths or seats in sleeper class and second class are also reserved for ladies. Season tickets permitting unlimited travel on specific sections or specific trains for a specific time period may also be available. Foreign tourists can buy an Indrail Pass, which is modeled on the Eurail Pass, permitting unlimited travel in India for a specific time period. For long distance travel, reservation of a berth can be made up to 120 days before departure. Details such as the name, age and concession if eligible, are required and are recorded on the ticket. The ticket price usually includes the base fare, which depends on the classification of the train example, super fast surcharge if the train is classified as a super fast, the class in which one wishes to travel and the reservation charge for overnight journeys. If a seat is not available then the ticket is given a waitlist number, otherwise the ticket is confirmed and a berth number is printed on the ticket. A person receiving a wait-listed ticket may be able to obtain a confirmed ticket if there are sufficient cancellations. Some of the tickets are assigned to the Reservation Against Cancellation RAC, which is between the waiting list and the confirmed list. These allow the ticket holder to board the train and obtain an allotted seat decided by a ticket collector, after the ticket collector has ascertained that a seat is vacant. Reserved railway tickets can be booked through the website of Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation IRCTC and also through mobile phones and SMS. Tickets booked through this site are categorized into i-tickets and e-tickets. I-tickets are booked by a passenger and then printed and delivered to the passenger for carrying during journey. E-tickets are printed by the passenger and carried while traveling. While traveling on an e-ticket, one must carry an authorized valid photo identity card. Cancellation of e-tickets are also done online, without the requirement for the passenger to go to any counter. Unreserved tickets are available for purchase on the platform at any time before departure. An unreserved ticket holder may only board the general compartment class. All suburban networks issue unreserved tickets valid for a limited time. For frequent commuters, a season pass monthly or quarterly guarantees unlimited travel between two stops. Topic. Freight service Topic. 
In 1999, the Konkan Railway Corporation introduced the roll-on roll-off service, a unique road rail system, on the section between Kolod in Maharashtra and Verna in Goa, which was extended in 2004 to Surathkal in Karnataka. The Roro service, the first of its kind in India, allowed trucks to be transported on flatbed trailers. It was highly popular, carrying about 110,000 trucks and bringing in about 740 million rupees worth of earnings to the corporation by 2007. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Urban Rail. Topic: <inaudible> Topic: <inaudible> 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 Suburban Rail. Topic: <inaudible> The Mumbai Suburban Railway is India's first commuter rail system and transports 6.3 million passengers daily, the highest passenger density in the world. The Kolkata Suburban Railway was established in Kolkata in 1854. The operational suburban rail systems in India are Mumbai Suburban Railway, Kolkata Suburban Railway, Lucknow Kanpur Suburban Railway, Chennai Suburban Railway, Delhi Suburban Railway, Pune Suburban Railway, Hyderabad Multimodal Transport System, Barabanki Lucknow Suburban Railway, and Purnam Karwar Suburban Railway. Other planned systems are Bengaluru Commuter Rail, Ahmedabad Suburban Railway and Coimbatore Suburban Railway. Metro The first modern rapid transit in India is the Kolkata Metro which started operations in 1984, as the 17th zone of Indian Railways. The Delhi Metro in New Delhi is India. S second conventional metro and began operations in 2002. The Nama Metro in Bangalore became India's third rapid transit system in 2011. Following these were Rapid Metro in Gurgaon, Mumbai Metro, Jaipur Metro, Chennai Metro, Kochi Metro, Hyderabad Metro and Lucknow Metro. Further systems in planning include, Noida Metro, Ghaziabad Metro, Navi Mumbai Metro, Nagpur Metro, Metro Link Express for Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad, Varanasi Metro, Kanpur Metro, Pune Metro, Vijayawada Metro, Patna Metro, Meerut Metro, Guwahati Metro, Chandigarh Metro, Bhopal Metro, Kori Code Light Metro, Indore Metro, Tiruvanantapuram Light Metro, Agra Metro, Coimbatore Metro, Visakhapatnam Metro, Dehradun Metro, Surat Metro, Srinagar Nagar Metro, Greater Gwalior Metro, Jubalpur Metro and Greater Nashik Metro. Some of these may be under construction and plan to be opened shortly. Monorail Monorail is generally considered a feeder system for the metro trains in India. The Mumbai monorail, which started in 2014, is the first operational monorail network in India excluding the Skybus Metro since the Patiala State Monorail Trainways closed in 1927. Other planned systems are Chennai Monorail, Kolkata Monorail, Allahabad Monorail, Bengaluru Monorail, Delhi Monorail, Indore Monorail, Kanpur Monorail, Navi Mumbai Monorail, Patna Monorail, Pune Monorail, Ahmedabad Monorail, Aizal Monorail, Bhubaneswar Monorail, Jodhpur Monorail, Kota Monorail, Nagpur Monorail and Nashik Monorail. Light Rail like monorail, light rail is also considered a feeder for the metro systems. The planned systems are Kolkata Light Rail Transit and Delhi Light Rail Transit. Tram In addition to trains, trams were introduced in many cities in late 19th century, though almost all of these were phased out. The trams in Kolkata are currently the only tram system in the country. The nationalized Calcutta Tramways Company is in the process of upgrading the existing tramway network at a cost of 240 million rupees $3.3 million. Private railways those state-owned companies like IR and the various metro companies enjoy a near monopoly in India, a few private railways do exist. These private railway lines are used exclusively for freight. 
There are railway lines owned and operated by companies including plantations, sugar mills, collieries and other mines, dams, harbors and ports. Private railways are operated by the Mumbai Port Trust, Madras Port Trust, Calcutta Port Trust, Visakhapatnam Port Trust and Bilai Steel Plant. The Tata Group operate funicular railways at Bihira and at Bispuri Road as well as the Kamshet Sharada Dam railway line. The Pipaviv Rail Corporation holds a 33-year concession for building and operating a railway line from Pipaviv to Surendranagar. The Kutch Railway Company, a joint venture of the Gujarat state government and private parties, is involved along with the Kandla Port Trust and the Gujarat Adani Port to build a Gandhidam Palanpur railway line. Topic: <laughs> UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Topic: there are two UNESCO World Heritage Sites on Indian Railways, the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus and the Mountain Railways of India. The latter consists of three separate railway lines located in different parts of India, the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway, a 610 mm narrow gauge railway in Lesser Himalayas in West Bengal, the Nilgiri Mountain Railway, a 1000 mm meter gauge rack railway in the Nilgiri Hills in Tamil Nadu and the Kalka Shimla Railway, a 762 mm narrow gauge railway in the Sawalik Hills in Himachal Pradesh. Topic. Issues The IR receive rail subsidies of around 260 billion rupees 3.8 billion dollars, 60% of which goes to commuter rail and short-haul trips. IR earns about 70% of its revenues from freight traffic 686.2 billion rupees from freight and 304.6 billion rupees from passengers in 2011-12. Most of its profits come from transporting freight, and this makes up for losses on passenger traffic. It deliberately keeps its passenger fares low. According to the report of High Level Safety Review Committee of 2012, from 2007-08 to October 2011 casualties in train accidents accounted for 1,019 deaths and 2,118 injuries. In the same period 1,600 railway staff were killed and 8,700 injured. The committee estimated that almost 15,000 persons get killed each year by what is called unlawful trespassing. A Daily Telegraph article stated that Indian railway officials believe that a large proportion of bodies found dead on railways died elsewhere and were put on the railway in dishonest attempts to get compensation from the railway authorities and companies. IR announced that by 2022 all trains would be electric to reduce their carbon footprint. Future IR's Research Design and Standards Organization undertakes research, design and standardization. The railway has undertaken several initiatives to upgrade its aging infrastructure and improve its quality of service. The Indian government plans to invest 9.05 trillion rupees $130 billion to upgrade IR by 2020. Topic. Infrastructure Topic. Infrastructure modernization projects include high speed rail, with the first Ahmedabad Mumbai train in operation in 2025, redevelopment of 400 stations by monetizing 2,700 acres 1, hectares of spare railway land under a 1,070,000 crore rupees $149 billion plan, doubling tracks to reduce congestion and delays while improving safety. 15,000 kilometers of double track existed in 2016, and funding for 12,000 500 km more was approved that year. The refurbishing of 12 to 15 year old coaches at the Carriage Rehabilitation Workshop in Bhopal to enhance passenger amenities and fire safety. Global Positioning System GPS enabled tracking of trains to improve safety and service. Digital India driven 3,500,000 million rupees $49 billion digitalization of the railway to improve efficiency and reduce cost. Rainwater harvesting, with 1885 systems installed by December. 2016, and reforestation of railway land and along the tracks. Electrification and power 
All routes will be electrified to save on imported fuel costs 48% of the network was electrified by May 2016, with full electrification planned by March 2021. Off-the-grid solar-powered trains are planned with the installation of 1 gigawatt of solar and 130 megawatts of wind power between 2017 and 2022. India introduced the world's first solar-powered train and 50 coaches with rooftop solar farms in June 2017. Rooftop solar electricity is planned at stations to reduce long-term fuel costs and protect the environment, and sustainable LED lighting at all stations is planned by March 2018 to cut electricity costs. Locomotive factories have been modernized, including two new factories in Bihar, an electric locomotive factory in Madhapura and a diesel locomotive factory in Marhaura, and 2,285 bio-toilets were introduced from April to July 2014. A 200 billion rupees $2 billion partnership with Alstom to supply 800 electric locomotives from 2018 to 2028 was announced. Topic. Safety. Topic. Safety projects include the elimination of an average of 1,217 unguarded level crossings per year by building an average of 1,066 overpasses and underpasses per year. An automated fire alarm system on Rajdhani Express trains was begun in 2013, extending to the air conditioned coaches of all trains, and 6,095 GPS enabled fog pilot assistance system railway signaling devices replacing the practice of placing firecrackers on tracks to alter train drivers. Installed in 2017 in four zones, Northern, North Central, North Eastern and North Western. See also List of railway stations in India List of countries by rail transport network size Indian Railways Fan Club References Topic Topic Further reading Topic Topic External links Topic Indian Railways Official Website